uh, for to speak on the amendment. Uh, I'm glad that the ranking member has ripened the question of bribes from China. I think it's one that I would like to explore with Hunter Biden if he were willing to properly acknowledge and honor the subpoena that he'd received from the United States Congress. And if there's any comparison on the Trump policies toward China and the Biden policies toward China, I am eager to engage in that comparison because President Trump put tax tariffs on China. He was tougher on China than any Republican or Democrat president in my lifetime for sure. And what I've learned about studying bribes is that when people pay them, they typically want something in return. And so when you've got these allegations about Trump in China, you're able to easily compare that to a record where Trump cracked down on China. Now let's compare that to the Biden record. After the Biden China bribes, you get the Biden administration dissolving the China initiative that President Trump and his administration set up at DOJ to specifically go after and prosecute uh, Chinese efforts to engage in malign influence with academia, with politicians, with high society. And I, I know we have members of this committee intimately familiar with Chinese malign influence. And we would want a DOJ resilient and capable to be able to ensure that no one fell victim to that from the United States Congress to even service on a city council. Uh, now, Hunter Biden had this interesting email exchange on his laptop related to China that I can't wait to ask him about when a judge ultimately orders him here or, or to a jail cell. Why was Hunter Biden hosting the, meet, the annual meeting for his investment fund at the home of the Chinese ambassador. Seems like an odd choice. There are a lot of great venues in Washington that could host the meeting for your annual investment fund, but when you choose to do it at the home of the Chinese ambassador, that seems to send a pretty clear message that it's hard to figure out where China ends and the Bidens begin. And I found it particularly interesting that while Hunter Biden was personally setting up this special and unique venue to convince people to invest in his fund based on his close ties with the Chinese, that all he had to do to secure the venue was agree to a private one-on-one -on -one meeting with the ambassador beforehand, which the emails indicate Hunter was readily willing to do. So aren't the rest of you curious to know what the ambassador wanted to meet with Hunter Biden about before Hunter Biden used his Chinese relationships to enrich himself, his family, his relatives, his uncle, his father, to pay the bills, to run the Biden crime family. I'd like to know what was going on at that meeting. Would the gentleman yield? Sure. Uh, let me just say it may very well be that what Hunter Biden was doing was wholly improper. It may very well be that what Hunter Biden was doing is crim was criminal. There is a special prosecutor. What there isn't is any evidence that President Biden had anything to do with any of this. Well, I, I, I would suggest that they probably, the ambassador from China probably wasn't requesting a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Hunter Biden to go over investment tips and investment strategies. And if we had Hunter Biden in the witness chair, we could ask him. So it's one thing to say, well, you know, there's just no evidence here. And then when we want to ask simple questions, like was the ambassador asking about Hunter Biden's art interests and whether he preferred oil paintings or watercolors? I'm guessing that's not the case. And the reason Hunter Biden doesn't want to be in that witness chair is because when confronted with the documents and the evidence, they are boxed in because everybody in this country knows what was going on. Hunter Biden was the bag man. He was collecting the money and Joe Biden was the inside man and he was delivering the results for China and anyone else that was willing to pay him off. And that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. I yield back. Without okay. objection, the report will be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Uh, the chair now recognizes himself for an opening statement. Who is the big guy? We all know, we all think we know, seems pretty common sense, but who is it? That's one of the questions we'd wanna ask Hunter Biden. What was the business? What was the service that the Bidens provided? What was the president's son doing to earn millions of dollars from foreign entities in jobs he wasn't qualified to have? 
And what did the president know about his family's foreign financial entanglements? These are just some of the questions that Congress needs answers to as part of our impeachment inquiry. To get those answers, the Oversight Committee and the Judiciary Committee issued subpoenas to Mr. Biden, compelling him to appear for a joint deposition on December 13th. Mr. Biden came to the Capitol on December 13th, but did not come to the committees for, those deposi for that deposition. Instead, he staged a press conference in front of the Capitol. This flagrant disregard for Congress's con constitutional oversight role clearly merits a citation of contempt. It's an open and shut case. Mr. Biden was issued an authorized subpoena and without asserting any valid privilege, frankly, I don't think he asserted any privilege, valid or not, he didn't show up to testify. This is a vote to protect our institution. Hunter Biden is a critical witness in the House's official impeachment inquiry and uniquely possesses knowledge about what role the president may have played in leveraging policymaking decisions to enrich the Biden family. Of course, the American people deserve to hear directly from Hunter Biden about these facts. And we fully intend for Mr. Biden to testify before the public, but as is often the practice across committees under Republicans and Democrats, he should first sit for a deposition so that the American people get a full airing of the facts. Here's just a few things we need to, uh, Hunter Biden to shed more light on. During a transcribed interview with the Oversight Committee, Devin Archer, longtime associate of Mr. Biden, described how President Biden was, quote, the brand and was used to send, quote, signals of power, access, and influence to enrich the Biden family from foreign sources while he served as vice president. Mr. Archer testified that Mr. Biden placed his father on speakerphone during meetings with business associates approximately 20 times. We know one of those calls was made on December 4th, 2015. On that date, while Hunter Biden was in Dubai with Burisma executives, Mr. Zolachevsky and Mr. Bazarski, they asked Hunter Biden to help alleviate the pressure they were under from the prosecutor in Ukraine. According to Mr. Archer, after that request was made, Hunter Biden, quote, called his dad. We know that a year after Hunter Biden was put on the board of Burisma, Vice President Biden attended a dinner at Cafe Milano on April 16th, 2015, with Mr. Pazarski and Hunter Biden and Devin Archer. Devin Archer, who was also on this Ukrainian energy company's board. What then Vice President Biden did with Burisma is the blueprint for how this whole influence peddling scheme worked. There are four fundamental facts about the Biden's involvement with this company. Fact number one, Hunter Biden was put on the board of Burisma's, uh, a board of directors of Burisma and made millions of dollars. Fact number two, Hunter Biden was not qualified to be on the board. Not my words, he said so himself in an inter interview on ABC News. Fact number three, Burisma executives asked Hunter Biden to help alleviate the pressure they were under from the prosecutor in Ukraine. Fact number four, Vice President Biden used his official position to hold up American tax dollars going to Ukraine until that pressure was, excuse me, was off Burisma. He conditioned the release of funds on the firing of the prosecutor who was applying the pressure to the company that his son sat on the board of. And these facts are corroborated with the confidential human source who told the FBI and was recorded in the 1023 form. In fact, the prosecutor, Victor Shokin, is mentioned eight times by the confidential human source in that 1023 form. That same form, by the way, that Director Ray tried to prevent Congress from seeing. The confidential human source said Burisma hired Hunter Biden to protect us through his dad from all kinds of problems. In addition to all that, the House Ways and Means Committee uncovered a threatening 2017 message from Mr. Biden to a Chinese business executive related to a business deal in which Mr. Biden wrote, quote, I'm sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Nine days later, Mr. Biden invoked his father in that threatening message. A company affiliated with that business wired $5 million to a company.
Oh 